Okay, today in Art Studio, I'm going to show you guys how to do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take several pictures and we're going to blend them together so they feel like they belong, right? And actually where this all came from was I was looking online and I found a picture of this old gentleman. Um, it's a black and white picture. It's really grainy, really gritty and all that stuff. And looking at him, my imagination started going crazy and I thought he would make an excellent zombie and that's what I was going for. So I'm going to show you this. This is going to be a little bit more complicated than some of the other stuff that we did. Like uh, the other day, we were doing stuff like um, this, where we were clipping pictures and just dragging and dropping things and trying to get them to fit like in the classroom or like this one, just simple things. So clipping things on a plain background, a white black a background, a black background. This is going to be a little different because we're going to be clipping something from a far more um, elaborate background and trying to make it fit. So this was the beginning. What we're gonna do is we're moving forward into um, this realm where we're gonna start doing things like this. So to start, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open a new file. So file, new, I'm gonna check and make sure that it says iPad. It's always a good idea to do that so that you have the right file type so it doesn't crash on you. And I'm gonna start with a transparent layer and hit create. Then what I'm gonna do is, in the file menu, I'm gonna start importing my photos. So I'm gonna choose the import option. You always wanna choose the import option. And you're gonna tell the iPad you wanna insert it as a layer, and you're gonna take it from your photos. So now I have lots and lots of different things. What I find is when I'm on the internet looking for stuff, I find pictures that I like, I save them. I might not even know what I'm gonna do with them, but I just save them for future reference. And this is the picture I want to start with. Okay, so I have a picture of this. This is the one. I like it. It's real grainy. It's real contrasty. Whoever took this picture did a really great job. You know, I see it. it to me, this guy obviously looks like he's had a hard life and all that other stuff. And I think I'm going to use that to my advantage with this project because I want to make him into a zombie. So, of course, if he's a zombie, he's got to be in an apocalyptic world. So I'm going to bring the background in. So I'll hit import again as a layer from photos, and I'm gonna look through my camera roll, trying to find, I looked earlier and saved a picture. It's a, an apocalyptic scene of a city that's all worn, torn, and destroyed. Here it is. It actually comes from a video game, from, from a Call of Duty video game, one of the earlier ones, but I think it works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna resize it so it fills the screen by going to edit, transform layer, then I'm gonna tell it to move scale and rotate, and I'm gonna move it into position, like so. When I got it set, I'll hit apply. Now I need to rearrange my layers so that the uh, older gentleman is up front, so I'm gonna grab and touch the three bars next to the image, and right to the right of layer two, and then I'll lift and raise that up and over, Right, so looking at it here, what I showed the, you guys the first day was the um, option to use the uh, blob tool down here, the selection tool. If I tap around, watch what happens. Okay, so it clicks a lot of stuff. W what's going on here actually is that I haven't changed the layers, so I'm still trying to select things from layer three, the background. All right, so I wanna select the background from layer, the, uh, the top layer. So I'm going to change layers and try again. Now what's happening is it's selecting a lot of different pixels because the background isn't one color. It's not white. It's not black. It's not green. It's not just a single color. What's happening is that the magic wand and the blob tool are going to get confused. They're, they're not going to know what you want because what they do is when you pick a pixel, when you tap a pixel, they, it'll circle everything that's matching that color. Since this background is really filled with a bunch of different shades of gray, this it doesn't know what to do. So those techniques won't work. What I'm going to have to do instead is I'm going to have to go and use the lasso tool. So if I go over here and I tap, you'll see the lasso is kind of right there in the middle. I just highlighted it. It's changed down to the bottom too with the quick, the quick change option down there. And now what I can do is I can circle around with my finger or my stylus around what I want to keep. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and circle the old man because I wanna keep that. Now, I got pretty close on some things. I'm getting close to take a closer look, but um, there's some stuff I need to fine tune. Like right there in the air, you can see I kinda have some of that area there I gotta get rid of. To get rid of it, if you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see that there are, next to the different types of selection tools, there's different ways to use it. There's a box, a square, then there's two squares that are in white, one over the other, then there's a square that's white with the square that is dark over it, and then there's two squares. Anyways, those things change the way this tool works. So if I go and I change that, this should remove things from whatever I select and it works in, by, by circling it. So if I put my finger on the screen mm -hmm. and I start to circle around, you'll see that that cut out a part of the selection area I was working from. So if I do it again, I'm cutting out. To add back, change it to the next option over the two squares that are white and on top of each other. And now I can add that back in by circling it. You have to circle because otherwise the iPad tries to guess what you want and it usually guesses wrong. So you see, and I got much closer in there, right there in the corner of the air. So I think I did a pretty good job. Oh, I, I got rid of some of his skin right here. I'm gonna bring that back. If it goes crazy on you, you just go back and try again. I gotta eliminate part right there above his left ear. So I'm gonna switch tools. I'm gonna switch variations of it and I'm gonna try again. See now it's going crazy. I'll go back, I get that corner there. I'll scan around. I'm gonna get in tighter around the hat. So remember you gotta circle because otherwise it doesn't know what you're doing and it guesses wrong. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm gonna get real close because I want to make sure that I don't have a lot of background. I don't want to leave like a halo around him. So I go and I circle. Of course, that's going to be crazy. There we go. So I have that. When I think I got it done, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the, to the edit menu. Up top. And I'm going to tell the iPad to copy. Then I'm going to tell it to paste. And now when you look... You have two versions of the old man. You have the one with the background, the original, and then you have the one without. So I'm gonna turn the one with the background off. So it's just off there. And I'm gonna make sure that I'm working on the top one. So now he's free of his original background and he can stand in front of this apocalyptic world. And I'm starting to, to, to create my, comp my composition here. So I'm gonna deselect to get rid of, deselect to get rid of that background. And here you go, I gotta start. Now if I, he's a zombie and all that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make him a zombie with, with blue glowing eyes. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is I am going to circle his eyes with the lasso tool because that's what I wanna work on, right? And I wanna make sure that I set it so that it's adding. So at the lower uh, part of the screen, you'll see that I have the two white boxes stacked on each other. I have that part of the tool highlighted and I'm gonna get in close and I'm gonna circle the eyes. So I'll circle one, and because I have it set so I can add, get the other one, and then I missed a little bit there, so I'll come back and get it. Missed a little bit more. So I think I got it. Now, I don't wanna change the original picture because I don't know, right now I'm just trial and error trying some things out to see how it works. So what I wanna do is anything I change, I wanna change on a separate layer so my original image stays put. So I'm gonna add a layer. And then what I'm gonna do is I go back and I'm gonna choose blue. I'm actually gonna modify that blue and make it a little lighter. And something like that. And then what I'm gonna do is change the, the tool. I'm gonna to pick up the spray can and set it so it's high uh, on a set for high and I'm just gonna paint with my finger so and you'll see that the only thing that changed is that area over the eyes because that's what I'm selecting to work on so um, there you go looks kind of weird right it's, it's just the start to really sell this though what I'm gonna do is go to the layer menu 
and you'll see on layer five where I have my blue glow, at the top, just above there, you'll see where the word layers, and then underneath it, you see normal. If you tap normal, it gives you a big long list of different blending modes that you can change and sample with to see how it affects the way these two different layers are blending. So right now the, with normal, what happens is anything up above covers anything down low. So I'm gonna try darken and you'll see the changes. Multiply, burn, subtract, screen, dodge. Best thing to do is just to kind of go through them and sample. Like I said, there's a lot of trial and error to this kind of art. So you can see here what's happening is it takes, by changing this blending mode, you use that, you take that layer and you make it somewhat transparent. So you're letting some of the darker marks from underneath shine through, from the layer underneath shine through. So I'll move around, I'm gonna stick with soft light, okay? So now if I wanted to go back and I wanted to make them really look like it's glowing, what I might do is I might pick a different color. Maybe I'll pick, I don't know, like a, a light purple or like maybe a light green or something like it does, you could just pretty much try it or we'll go with orange or not orange sorry pink what i'm going to do is i'm going to make the eyes look like they're glowing so but i don't want to change the color of the eyes themselves i want to change the area around it and keep the eyes protected i want to change everything but the eyes so using what i have here i'm not going to reselect anything i'm just going to use the selection i already have what i'm going to do though is go to the select menu up top and I'm going to tell it to inverse and you'll see now the selection line is around the outer edge. So now what I can do is I can go back and I can with the spray can um, spray all over the screen and you'll notice that things will change around the eyes but the eyes themselves will stay the same. So it looks like that. Oh, I picked blue. Let's go with pink. We'll try pink instead. You see and there that that mark is made. Okay and again it looks weird I know but that's when we come back and we change that blending mode and we see how that affects things. You get some different different looks depending on what you do. So that kind of turned everything green. It's hard to predict what it's gonna do until you try it. You get different tones, I kind of like that, right? If you're looking at it and you're, like, you're thinking that looks pretty cool but it's just a little too intense, can I tone it down? In the layer menu, you see underneath Dodge, there's that slider, it says 100% right now. You can set that down, kind of soften it so it's not as not as intense. You can try another layer, maybe, I don't know, I'll try with an orange and we'll just see how this works. Come back, spray paint again, I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit. Okay, again, we'll try the blending mode. Change it up, see how that affects things. Different appearances. You know, keep fiddling around with it until it gets, it looks the way you want it to. Maybe I'll go with this one and I'll just tone it down a little bit. Okay. So you're seeing now that by adding a little color over top, what's happening is this black and white picture of this old man is now starting to look more like it fits in that background. And that's an important thing because that's what you want. You want everything to feel like it belongs. Something else I might try to help make it seem like it all belongs, I could also add in another layer and do just an overlay. So if I took this layer, and let's just say I chose the color green, I'm just picking colors, and I went to the, to the toolbar and I picked the um, paint bucket, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop green and it looks like it covers everything up. But if I go to the layer menu and I change the blending mode, You'll see how it affects the whole thing. So I can, and that's gonna kinda, it's gonna unify the pieces and make them look like they all belong together. And then what I could do is I could also tone it down. So there's a green tint over everything. Or if I didn't wanna do that, what I could also try too is I could add another layer. I turned that off now. And I could apply a gradient using the gradient tool. So I'll do that. Remember that's, you drop a line like so, and you're getting green and pink. Those are the two colors that are active in the upper right-hand corner. I could change those if I wanted to. 
by tapping the, the color palette and you see color one is green. If I tap color two, it's, it's, it's uh, pink. All right, so you know, again, what I can do here is change the blending mode, see how it affects things. You know, just kind of keep going until it looks the way I want. Or I get something that I'm happy with, tone it down, maybe try that's kind of creepy. Maybe I'll do that. Let's tone it down a little bit. And it's just helping to anchor and connect everything. So that's that's the start. There's also one last thing we can do. We could also bring in a, a picture. I have, have a photograph overlaid on top of it. So if I go File, Import, Insert it as Layer from Photos. I have this picture I found. I thought it was really interesting and cool. It's a, just a picture, an up-close uh, photograph of the center part of a flower. This is it, as it comes in. I like the color, I like it's vibrant. You got the vibrant red, you got the vibrant, or you got the white background. I like the shoots, how it looks like they kind of radiate out from a, a por uh, the bottom somewhere. And to me, it kind of looks like an explosion. So I'm gonna transform it by going edit, transform, and make it large enough to fit the screen. And then, I'll do the same old trick where I change the blending mode to see how it affects things. And just experiment around. Try that. Because I just want the faint hint, just a hint of it being there. Helps hide some of the rough edges. Changes the tone. You know, just gives you what you want. Like, You just keep on experimenting until you're satisfied. That's a little too much burn. There you go. So let's tone it down a bit. And that's it. So a lot of this, like I said, is trial and error. You just get out there and try some things, see how it looks. If you're satisfied, keep it. If not, try again. And that's it. That's all I got for today.